So good evening, everybody. At the outset, uh, uh, the last but one session, so I'll try to be fast. Uh, this is an uh, interesting topic on um, Indian diabetic dyslipidemia. Request for the special attention. So after an ex excellent uh, panel discussion, most of the things has been uh, discussed uh, in the panel decision, the uh, panel discussion. So I'll be rush, uh, run through a few slides. So this talk is sponsored by AstraZeneca. So first of all, greetings to all of you from Bangalore. So if you know the risk factors for diabetes and dyslipidemia in India, uh, there are so many risk factors like age, male, family history, urban residence, abdominal obesity, hypertension, income status, obesity. So there are so many factors which leads for a person of uh, to develop diabetes and dyslipidemia. So we know that Indian phenotypic, we have a unique, unique uh, characteristic features like higher insulin resistance, greater abdominal adiposity, higher waist circumference, characteristic dyslipidemia, that is high triglycerides, low HDL, and uh, high small dense LDL. So all these things leads to increased susceptibility to type 2 diabetes and uh, CAD. So there are challenges like we have got greater abdominal adiposity and visceral fat at any given BMI, higher waist circumference and waist to hip ratio, low level of adipokine and high plasma leptin, increased concentration of uh, triglycerides, low rate of uh, glucose disposal, impaired insulin secretion and increased insulin resistance and genetic factors. So Indian phenotype needs to control both like diabetes as well as dyslipidemia. So the early and appropriate treatment is required for both. If you take diabetes, so instead of doing the conventional follow-up of one after the other, one OAD, two OAD, three OADs, OADs like that, if you have been aggressive from the beginning, you can see this is the glycemic variability which occurs if you go by the conventional method. But if you are aggressive from the beginning, that is the rationale for the initial combination therapy in type 2 diabetes, so there will be early lowering of HbA1c, avoidance of clinical inertia associated with the stepwise approach of therapy, initiation of therapeutic intervention with complementary mechanisms of actions, potential to use less than maximal doses of individual agents to minimize side effects, and FC, FDC options have the potential to improve the patient adherence. If you do that, you can see the, base, the uh, baseline HbA1c as well as the continuation of the treatment of uh, diabetes management, you can maintain HbA1c around 7 or less than 7. So what will be the consequences of delayed intervention? So the consequences is at 5.3 years, there will be an increased risk of MI of 67%, stroke by 51%, heart failure by 64%, composite uh, CV outcomes by 62%. So we need to reduce these events if we are aggressive from the beginning. So this bad glycemic legacy has to be uh, driven off by treating aggressively from the man initiation from the initial stages of type 2 diabetes management. If you take in this slide, if you see there is a re greater reduction in HbA1c with DAPA and SAXA across all the baseline HbA1c group. Now coming to an important aspect of today's discussion, that is the dyslipidemia management. If you take dyslipidemia status in Indian diabetic patients, like prevalence of dyslipidemia, you can see 79%. The patient on statin achieve LDL goals is 51%. Per, 51%. The patient on statin plus other lipid lowering agents, you take achieved LDL goal is uh, more than 50%. So there is need of appropriate treatment for Indian diabetic dyslipidemia in our patient. So the risk of CVD is higher for Indian patients. In comparison with the Europeans, the CVD affects Indians almost a decade earlier. 10% of heart attacks occurs in India less than 40 years. 52% of CVD deaths occurring under 70 years. So in the inter-heart study, the dyslipidemia appears to be the strongest contributor of acute MI in Indians. Just reducing 39 milligram of LDL by statin, it reduces 21% risk of major vascular events. That is 24% reduction in major coronary events, 
24% by coronary revascularization, 15% reduction in stroke, 12% reduction in any vascular death, and 9% reduction in any death, and effect on major vascular events. So, analysis of cardiovascular risk of patients with type 2 diabetes derived from Steno 2 studies, you can see in this that reduction in lipids as early as possible in the long run you will have a benefit. So at what stage should do treatment to be started? You can see in this slide that we can be used as a primary prevention or when the person has got the endothelial dysfunction can be used as a secondary prevention and as well as in the tertiary prevention. So we shall evaluate now for the patients for dyslipidemia management. So the need for statins in primary prevention. We all know this uh, Jupiter trial, the way back in 2003, we, gone, we came to know about this importance of this trial where HSCRP was used as an indicator. The rosuvastatin helped reduce LDLC by 50% in an year. You can see in this slide, 50% reduction in LDLC, triglyceride by 17% and HSCRP by 37%. So rosuvastatin treatment reduced the risk of other CV events as well. You can see in this, uh, in this slide, there is 4% reduction. If you take the number to treatment, not number needed to treat is 25. 47% reduction in MI, stroke, or CV death. Revascularization reduction is there. Fatal and non-fatal stroke reduction is there. 45% reduction in CV events in CKD and all-cause mortality by 44%. So with 50% reduction in LDLC, the CV events reduced significantly. So the Roosevelt statin was found to be more effective in reducing LDLC, LDLC HDL ratio, and non HDLC when it is compared with atorvastatin. This is a common question asked, like which to use, whether it is Roosevelt statin or atorvastatin. In this particular study, Uranus, you can see the Roosevelt statin scores over atorvastatin in reduction with LDLC, triglyceride ratio, as well as the non HDLC. So when it comes to secondary prevention, now that is an important aspect as well. You can see there is a superior LDLC reduction along with plague regression helps achieve additional 20-12% reduction of maize. So in this study, that is a, it is a hello study, the person with 2 to 3 vessel CAD, that is coronary artery disease, you can see the study demonstrated an independent association between fibrous cap thickening and improved CEC, that is a cholesterol efflux capacity that may contribute to morphological changes suggesting plague stabilization and regression. So this slide uh, is an example of regression of atherosclerosis with rosuvastatin in asteroid. This study is an asteroid study like they have seen by you seeing the regression of atherosclerosis by using the intravascular ultrasound. So the rosuvastatin 40 milligrams showed a plague, uh, plague regression. So this asteroid study, they showed 78% patient showed plague regression. That is an important study which showed a beneficial in plague regression. So these two studies like Meteor and asteroid, both in early disease and advanced disease, if you use rosuvastatin, the beneficial is more. So rosuvastatin showed higher LDLC reduction compared to atorvastatin. This is a lunar study. I'm just showing the multiple studies, add-on studies between the rosuvastatin and the atorvastatin. Does the risk end here? There is a need to continue therapy? Yes, the both non-culprit region and the culprit region have similar risk of recurrent ev events for the next three years. This prospect study, that the prospective study of the natural history of atherosclerosis over three years in patients with ACS who underwent PCI. So what does the recent ESC and ADA guidelines recommend? You can see earlier the better. Even in ESC 2019 guidelines for dyslipidemia, you can see at various level of HDL, 
like you can see at 116 100 milligrams 70 milligrams and 55 milligrams it is always asked how low ldl is the beneficial the, the commonest is as low as possible so that is the answer the various studies have shown the reduction in ldl does matter and depending upon the various stages of diabetes or the various level of ldls you need to be using higher statin or the moderate statin or the low intensity statins. So a diabetic patient with or without dyslipidemia may have moderate to very high CV risk. So this is what the ESC guideline looks like a very busy slide. But what does it say is depending upon the overall level of LDL C level, you assess the patient and be aggressing with the high intensity statin, then you can always reduce to moderate intensity statin, or if the LDLC uh, expectation is not there, you can use the low, uh, low intensity statin. So it all depends upon the level of LDLC. So intensification of statins to be considered before combination. So ESC 2019 guidelines on dyslipidemia management in diabetes, what it say, says is intensification of statin therapy should be considered before the introduction of combination therapy. If the goal is not achieved, a statin combination with azitimabib should be considered. So now the question is always asked as Dr. Manoj asked in his last question of the panel discussion, choosing the innovator. So why you have to choose the innovator? The common question always is asked is patient cost, benefit, affordability all this comes into the picture but why you have to choose the innovator is there any benefit to choose the innovator in one of the studies done in with regard to atorvastatin atorvastatin gener generics obtained from multiple sources worldwide contained a me methylated impurity professor manoria was telling about the methylated impurity that reduces the hmg coa reductase inhibitory effects this is an important thing that is where the innovator molecule has to be used because this impurity has shown to have no inhibitory effects on HMG reductase enzyme activity. The Spanish registry data that is a real world study on outcomes with generic versus brand name statins. You can see in this slide the comparator to innovator statin, the adjusted probability of all cause death was significantly higher with generics. That is 62% higher risk in patients with previous cardiovascular event. So poorer treatment persistence and adherence in patients on generic statins. So patients receiving generics were more unlikely to reach the LDLC goals. Though these challenges you face regularly in novel clinical practice. So when cost is not a factor, so the, the original innovator molecule has to be used. But if you take with the Rosuva statin per, in particular, if you take the innovator molecule, the cost difference between the generic Indian molecule or the when it compared to the innovator, it is not a much a difference. That is what it has to be remembered. It is not like uh, other molecules where there is a huge difference. When you compare with the Rosuva statin among the branded uh, innovator or the generic, the cost difference is not much. By using the original molecule, so you are doing a great justice to our patients. So the Rosewood statin has the largest clinical program from efficacy to the protection and saving lives. Like when it comes to the innovator molecules, so they have got nearly 2,480 related literatures, 100 plus marketed in more than 100 countries, nearly 400 million clinical prescriptions are there, there are 739 clinical studies. That is the amount of backup or background it has got with innovator molecule. To summarize my talk, ladies and gentlemen, the risk of CVD is higher in Indian patients, which can be reduced by reducing LDLC. Guidelines recommend settling the LDLC goals for patients on their risk course and use of statin as the first line of therapy to reach the goals set for the specific level of risk. Guidelines suggest to consider intensification of statins to the maximum tolerated dose before combination therapy. Rosuva statin helps reduce LDLC reduction by 52% 
and triglyceride reduction by 21% in diabetic dyslipidemia patient. To have optimum efficacy, we should consider original statin. We are doing justice to our patient. Thank you for your patience hearing.